I'm celebrity fashion stylist and television host Marcellus Reynolds, and I am here today for Desire List. As far as a fashion stylist, I've worked for um, British Vogue, I've worked for InStyle Magazine, um, I've worked with Sharon Stone, Justin Timberlake, the gorgeous, incredible, sublime, amazing Rebecca Hall with her amazing British accent and her beautiful skin. Um, Jayma Mays from Glee is my goddess. Oh my God, I love her. Every chance I get to work with her is the best. Um, I got to see Eddie Cibrian in his underwear, so there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> and that's what I do now. I travel all over the world, and I'm, that's why I know everything there is to know about fashion and entertainment. Little black boy from the south side of Chicago grows up, he's the gay kid, gets bullied, gets beaten up, gets chased home every single day, decides at some point that he has to leave the south side and find a better place to go. So I got my first job at 15 in a woman's retail store. I had to lie about my age and I lied about the fact that I was still in high school. I was the kid, the little like gay boy that would cut high school to go to work. I loved fashion that much. By the time I was 17 years old, my mother who was a nurse you know, made good money. I was making double what she was making. I was the top salesperson in the company for this huge, like it was called, it was called T. Edwards and there was a chain of like 200 stores. And I was pulling down like 80 grand a year as a salesperson and commission and salary. I wanted to go to college. I did really well in high school, but fashion was working for me. So I took a job working for a clothing store that moved me at 18 years old to one of their top stores in a shopping area called in Birmingham, Michigan, where I turned around their store um, and made it into like a million dollar a year store. Then I decided that I wasn't living my best life. I had always wanted to be an actor. So I moved back to Chicago and I did what actors do. I enrolled in college. I went to the University of Illinois Circle. I was taking classes and I was waiting tables as I was working my way through college. One day while I was waiting tables, the table of women during lunch, and I hated working lunches, but you had to work a lunch. They were like, oh my God, you're cute, you should model. And I was like, literally have the salmon because I got hit on at the restaurant all the time. And I thought these women were like hitting on me. And this one woman is like, my name is Marie Anderson. If I think you should be a model, you should be a model. Marie Anderson, who discovered Cindy Crawford, by the way, was like, you should be a model. So I was like, great, I'll be a model. So <laughs> Marie literally made me a model. And very quickly, I became not a, a-list model, but a B-list model. Like right out of the gate, I started working, working, working as a catalog boy, because I got good teeth and a great smile. So I was jumping around for like Target. I was jumping around for Montgomery Ward. And then in 1996, a photographer named Norman Jean Roy came to Chicago and he asked me to shave my head for a book he was doing. And my bookers were like, no, he makes too much money, he can't shave his head. And I was like, no, if Norman Jean Roy wants you to shave your head, you shave your head. So I shaved my head and it changed my career. And then I became an editorial boy. I did a boatload of runway shows. I opened and closed Ralph Lauren. I opened Tommy Hilfiger. I closed Nautica. Um, I was a very like American sort of like top, top boy with, with high-end American clients. And from there, I kind of figured out what I wanted to do next. Most models like age out and they get really freaked out about what they're gonna do. I was the model that was actually too short to be a model. I was the model that like would come in and I was too skinny. Back then I was so skinny. I had abs, but I didn't have like this crazy body, but that was good because a lot of black boys had bodies and couldn't fit sample sizes. So I was the boy that did Prada. I was the boy that was a fit model for Brioni because I could fit everything. Most models hit this point where it's like, what do I do next? I knew that I was either gonna be a fashion stylist because people were always complimenting me on the way I dressed, or I was gonna be a booker because I loved the business of fashion. I loved like sort of cutting deals. In 2000, I was in um, New York. I was actually working for Christy Turlington, as strangely as that sounds, but I was still modeling. And a friend who I had modeled with in, when I lived in London was now an editor at British Vogue and she was in town shooting and she was like, I'm styling some things for British Vogue, but I don't have a stylist, do you wanna do it? And I was like, mm, yeah, I could do that. I've been on enough sets as a model. I've been stuck with enough pins. I've had people steam things while I'm wearing them. I can do this. So my first job as a fashion stylist was like 
eight pages for British Vogue. So I came back to Chicago after the season in New York was over, showed it to my booker, and my booker was like, yeah, we can do something with this. And so from that point on, I was a fashion stylist. When you're a stylist, you have to work. Like literally you have to beg for clothes, beg for accessories, you're dragging things around, you're like, you're obsessed about whether some stupid model is gonna steal that pair of pants that happen to be $450 or $1,200. There's so much work that goes into a stylist. You constantly have to think, and I hated it. So the opportunity presented itself to come to LA and to do Big Brother. A friend who had been a model was now a producer on a different show by that same production company. They couldn't find a black guy that they liked. Nikki Calabrese was like, oh, I know a black guy and he's a model. The thing with models is like we have these comp cards and when you're friends with a model, you all carry each other's comp cards. So at any given time, I would have like 10 comp cards of my crew with me. Nikki had my comp with her and she was like, this is my friend. And the producers are like, oh my God, he's super cute. Tell us about it. Well, he's gay, he's crazy and you'll love him. Everyone loves him. And so the producers are like, okay, how can we meet them? How can we meet him? So they were already in casting. They end up flying to Chicago to meet me. I had just broken up with my like, the love of my life. So this is what they are presented with doing Big Brother. Me being a complete nightmare. I can't believe he broke up with me. He cheated on me with that trash from the real world. Who even watches reality television? I'm like a nightmare and I would go from like, like being like a crying mess to being this really like aggro, I'm gonna get him back. This is not gonna happen to me. Like I would be like, I was like literally that person. And they were like, oh my God, you're magnificent. I did Big Brother, I was the focus of the season. I almost won, I made the, the worst decision in Big Brother history and that's how I got kicked out. But it became this like phenomenon. And like literally I walked off the set and I got my first contract with E within like three months of walking off the set. And then I've just been, celebrity fashion stylist Marcellus Reynolds ever since, and I've been TV host Marcellus Reynolds ever since.